monsters all over There's nowhere to hide And even after everything Your dragon's done To keep you safe Cast him aside Stuck to your pride Ooh, king Why'd you have to let your loved ones die? This is sick! Thank you, Hertz. Now let's get to work. What an experience. I just landed in Atlanta from New York. I went through this futuristic next level car rental experience. Now in a Cadillac, about to put on some Ludacris and move on to my next stop. Your average NFL player is probably somewhere between the age of 22 years old to like 28. These are young men. Mm -hmm. And these young men, they get paid to work and their job is to play football. Uh, so I think that they go into this with a very innocent mindset and ultimately they're taken advantage of by once again, the wrong people. And it's up to agencies like Vayner Sports to really be that guide to them that almost like the eyes and ears that they don't have right now because they're so focused on playing sports that when you partner up with a with a with an agency or a sports management firm like Vayner you know those folks are getting paid to bring to you opportunities and really weed through all the bullshit that exists Vayner Sports uh, oversee all the marketing and off the field opportunities for the guys including branding PR um, events as well so anything that does not happen on the NFL contract representation is kind of in my lane and my expertise. Justin it's a pleasure to be here in Atlanta with you for Super Bowl weekend now I was reading your bio mm -hmm. and did a little homework on you yeah. and I learned that you ran a sports marketing agency yep. called Inclusive yep. for about six years before mm -hmm. coming over to Vayner Sports. What made you go from working for yourself to working for someone else? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Um, people ask me that all the time because previously to partnering with Gary and AJ, I had never, um, you know, not owned the majority of any company that I that had been. But really, sometimes things in li life just kind of line up. Uh, the opportunity to know like what inclusive was was very interestingly a lot of the pieces of what Vayner Sports is but missing the NFL agent piece. And what I realized is that being able to, inclusive was all about brand building off the field and, and that kind of, and digital as well. Being able to kind of pair up with the Vayner brand and having Gary and AJ and really taking it to the next level was something that was just too big of an opportunity. You know, I grew up as a kid in Middletown, Maryland, literally sitting Indian style watching Sports Center on highlights from 6.30 every single day to know that like, my goal was to ultimately literally raise the bar of branding and off the field opportunities for guys and knowing that like Gary's platform and the Vayner platform would be help me get there. So, you know, I met them, felt their energy and it was just a no brainer. 
Justin, as EVP for Vayner Sports, what do you enjoy most about your role? Uh, um, my role, it's, for me, it's very simple actually. Helping these guys accomplish things that they never really thought they would or doing something super special for them that might not even be a dollars and cents. Um, I'm gonna give you an example. One of my clients, Rob Candici, is huge into music. Um, probably just a, loves being a musician as much as being a professional football player. He told me a couple years ago that his dream would be to meet Carlos Santana and just pick his brain. I, you know, from that moment, my, my goal was like someday get him to be able to do that. Was able this past two months ago, we flew to Vegas, got in the, the uh, House of Blues, sat in the Jackson Brown suite overlooking the stage, watching Carlos Santana, and then he had 30 minutes with Carlos Santana to do a meet and greet after. And I literally just surprised him with that. To me, that was like more important to me than doing like a million dollar endorsement deal. Like to see him feel like, man, these guys really care about me as a human on the, like the core level. Those moments, the other piece is when you're winning and losing with your guys, man. Like when they do something exceptional, you're there for them. When they, when they don't, when they fumble, when they mess up, like being there, that closeness and that really in the trenches, like I'm that kind of guy in my heart. I was raised that way. Like that makes me excited, you know? I, I, you live and breathe with them, you know? Would you say a big part of your role besides acquiring clients is also to keep them happy through matchmaking? So uh, like in this case, connecting Rob with Carlos Santana? A hundred percent. You know, I, I focus more, it's both, because the marketing is a huge piece of why clients go with Vayner Sports. like it's our differentiator, but 100%, there's a lot of little things. I'm gonna give you another example. Kyle Allen, my quarterback, he loves bird scooters. Literally, he drives his bird scooter to practice. I'm like, dude, we gotta, we gotta get something done with bird scooters. We reach out to bird scooters. They know about the Vayner brand. Next thing we know, we're making Kyle Allen a custom bird scooter. He's going to the office next week in LA. They're gonna do a little content session with him. That wasn't a huge dollars and cents thing, but for him, like that was like the brand he loved. So, and bring the thing full circle. The executives from Bird last were at the party last night. Look, see what's good. Yeah, no way. I'm gonna have to take it this way. All right, these are gonna be... What's good? He just wants to take a photo of us. Okay. So, okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> this, these two are, okay, here we go. That's us, Th right? These two are Gary, Gary. and then there's a Vayner Sports. We Got went it. four, basically, Gary okay, and I. So, so here you go. Gary. Is red taken? Yeah, Hold on, so seven, seven shouldn't be open, yeah, right? Yeah. Hey, Joe, seven's GV. Huh? It's still saying open, Table number seven, seven is Gary. Is Gary Vaynerchuk. It's open seven, right now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's it still shows. green on there. Okay, so here you go. Here we go, ready? Yep. T Grizzly, six. T Grizzly. So right next to us is Gary. Gary, Gary. Gary. Vayner Sports is nine. One, Vayner Sports, Sports one. One. Then next to that, yep. Nine. Nine. So y, YG is across the way. Yep, so Vayner Sports, So we got these two yes. tables, basically. Yes. Then. quoted saying Vanier Sports wants to change the way athletes do business and since we're talking about the business of sports mm -hmm. how do athletes do business off the field? I think a lot of sports agencies are nervous to get involved and really give their opinion and help foster those opportunities because you know that can be seen as a risky thing when you represent a guy you're just trying to you know keep him and keep him happy and make sure you're taken care of 
I'm very fortunate that AJ and Gary have had such successful track records of building companies to where it's a no-brainer for these guys to take their opinions into account and think about like, hey, what are you going to do year five? What are you going to do year 10? Um, you know, a lot of these guys are starting to, to look at opportunities that Gary and AJ bring them. And I think that track record allows us, you know, if the guy goes and tears his ACL in the third year and he's done forever, um, let's try to have something set up. And I think the track record of them is what's allowed Vayner Sports to bring that to the table. We ran, we ran a couple before. Who's on that? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Oh, he's gonna play one more. C Rock. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm okay. Uh, Uh, my name is AJ Vaynerchuk. I'm the co-founder of Vayner Sports. I'm a certified NFL agent, and I oversee the operations of the company. Grew up a diehard sports fan, um, and then even beyond the field, was always interested in the, the off-season activity, what was going on in the front office. So always was familiar with the NFL draft, the NBA draft. Those are my two favorite sports, football and basketball. And so you know, we started Vayner Media together back in 2009. We had great success with that business. And for me, um, I was looking for a new challenge, and I thought that um, I had the opportunity to dive into something that really blended my two biggest passions of business and sports, and here we are. Now, you're two years into the business, yeah. uh, Vayner Sports. This is your second Super Bowl, and I have to tip my hat off to you and your team. You guys, yeah. last night, threw an epic party at the yeah. IG. You had your roster of clients, and you had a lot of athletes yep. there. Like, yep. is, is the strategy when you're going to, to Super Bowl yeah. or you know, for any one of these major events that, like, you guys are trying to bring in brands as well as athletes, or is the focus on one versus the other? I think the biggest focus is just our brand, um, in the sense that what Vayner Sports stands for is providing the best service to our guys and creating a platform beyond the field. And so the most important piece is making sure that our guys are having a great time and are being brought unbelievable opportunities. And then a party like last night, the way I looked at it, it was kind of a statement. It was a, we planted a flag in the ground with that party, and I think it was just the idea that we're building a brand, we're building a movement that I think is just a fresh look at the industry, and I don't think anybody's really taking that approach. And so, yeah, last night was a culmination of a few years of hard work and uh, a lot of factors. Uh, you know, shout out to my brother for building an unbelievable personal brand that I think was the, everything trickles down from. We had a great partner in 1.37 p.m., which is a, uh, a Vayner X company, and uh, it was just a, a great night, frankly. That was the approach to it. And from an outsider's perspective, I had an opportunity to attend the party. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, you know, it definitely felt like you guys put on such a, a well-produced event. <clears throat> yeah. It had high-profile athletes and celebrities there that I can see where the Vayner Sports party every year going mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. will be the go-to marquee Super Bowl party to be a part of. That's the idea. Um, first off, too, like just a major shout-out to Justin G. and Grande and Lex McPherson. Uh, Jessica Stallworth as well, uh, Matt DeMeo, honestly the whole team, but those few folks in general, uh, David Jaffin as well from my team. Um, you know, the, the non-certified agent side of Vayner Sports really showed out last night with that event, and it was a ton of work, and so yeah, I, I think that's the idea. Like I said, we kind of made it uh, a flag in the ground, and I think that that party last night will be the weakest Super Bowl party we'll throw moving forward. We'll always learn, I think I, I take massive pride in learning from what we do, and while I, I can smell the roses last night and say it was great, I already know 15 things that we can do better next year, and then we're just going to keep building. So eyes are plus, already it's, in Miami. Plus, it's going to be in Miami. Exactly. Yeah, eyes are already on the Miami. The planning for Miami started this morning. We already had a conversation, and it will really pick up on Monday. Like, we're all in on Super Bowl being uh, a marquee moment for this what company. What expect from Miami? Better weather. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned your brother Gary before. Yeah. You know, obviously, he goes by Gary Vee. He has a cult-like following across social media. Like, how much of that popularity carries over into Vaynersports? It carries over a lot. Um, I think we, we rely on my brother's brand to provide a lot of the opportunity we get our athletes, right? So 
we utilize Gary's brand and his network to bring in branded uh, sponsorship opportunities for our guys to get our guys into meetings and conferences that maybe they couldn't get on. You know, obviously our guys are extremely capable of doing their own thing, but I think our job is to be additive to what they can do themselves, right? If they have their personal brand in a local market, we just want to boost that. So, yeah, I think it definitely carries in a lot. Um, I think oftentimes we're still in a place where we need to build more awareness of Vayner Sports in the sense and attach it to Gary even more. Um, because oftentimes we, we have folks not realizing that the, not that the two aren't associated, but a lot of times um, just the Vayner Sports brand hasn't been, it needs to, still more growing to make that tie between Gary and Vayner Sports even more uh, top of mind. And perhaps with that being the case, speak to what's the plan moving forward to continue to grow? I think, the, Sports brand? For, I think the party last night's a good example. I think there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people that are now more familiar with Vayner Sports today, and it's in, in the relevant circles. Um, so that's a big piece of it, events. Uh, we throw a big ESPYs party every year as well, out in LA in July. Uh, maybe we'll add a third event, um, much to the chagrin maybe of some of the people on the events team. Two's enough, but uh, just those things. And then honestly, just patience. It's a matter of time. We're, we know what we're building. Can you speak to when you're putting on these events from an investment standpoint? Yeah, our goal is to be profitable with these events. So um, yes, we're investing a ton of time and, and man and woman power into it. Um, if we can, we'd like to turn a small profit on the event. You know, if we take a loss, we take a loss. Um, but the goal is to be profitable. And from a KPI standpoint, are you looking at metrics such as nope. you know, inquiries for, for brands that want to work with you or nope. athletes that want to sign on? No metrics. It's a brand play. Um, not going to get tied down into black and white numbers on it. I think as silly as this sounds, and I think I'll get panned for this, like I can feel the after effect of that event already with our existing clients. With brands, like just the feedback is, um, you can just feel it, I'll be honest. Now, AJ, you were quoted previously saying Vayner Sports wants to change the way athletes do business. Yeah. So I have to ask you, how do athletes do business off the field? Most, there are some, but most athletes put off business and entrepreneurship and other opportunities until they're done playing, and then it's too late. Um, there are definitely some that are proactive and on top of it. Uh, our goal is for any guy that is at Vayner Sports to be able to balance both football and building a life after football at the same time. So that's how we push it. That's how we see it. AJ, last question. Yeah. What is Vayner Sports' competitive advantage in comparison to other agencies? Um, honestly, I just think that the, the ability to innovate, uh, our relationships with brands, our relationships just off the field. Um, I think we have a fresh set of eyes on the industry. Something I take a lot of pride in is that Gary and I started an advertising agency with zero advertising agency experience, and we built one of the greatest independent agencies ever. So um, I think there's a lot of agencies that are redundant and repetitive, and we're just coming from a fresh perspective, and I think it's an advantage. Now, for example, I had an opportunity to sit down with one of your clients, Walter Powell, mm -hmm. yesterday, and I really like his background. He played in the league for a few years, kind of bounced around from the main roster to the practice squad, and when he decided to retire, he decided he was going to do a tech startup. Yep. And he's working with Banner Sports mm -hmm. and getting the consulting yep. that necessarily wasn't afforded to him, you know, from the New York Jets or any oh, other team 100%. that he played with. Yeah, I, I mean, not to say that it's a case study, but it's, it, you know, he chose, he had an opportunity with the Dallas Cowboys and chose to go pursue his passion. And I like to believe knowing that he had us to be supporting him through this, right? You have AJ and a team behind you who are literally helping you road wrap of how you get a startup to be successful. So, um, you know, that again is in a win of we had one, you know, he wasn't the most high profile client of all time, but Walter's a great guy and he's doing really special things. And so if Politoscope goes out there and it becomes one of these multi successful companies, that's just as good as us as him scoring a ton of touchdowns. Now, tell us a little bit more about how you made this transition from mm -hmm. playing professional football mm -hmm. to starting up your own app. Uh, it was just, uh, I feel like this, the whole story was just literally a gift from God just because. I was at a point in my life where I was trying to figure out my true purpose in life. You know, I know football was my passion, but it wasn't my purpose. And just, it just came at just the right time. And like, I was just being realistic in myself, just going into year four and just everything that was happening. Like I was probably gonna be in the NFL for another, you know, two, three more years at best. But uh, with this opportunity, I just seen, I could see it farther than my NFL career. And I knew I could make a change and really just leave my impact on this world with, this product that I've created, and not even a product, a tool that I created that people can use and just you know feel good about using and feeling informed. Now speak to that product. 
Mm -hmm. What was the inspiration behind it? And, and, and mm -hmm. what is the product? So um, the inspiration behind, well, I'm going to talk about the product first. So Politiscope, I, I created a nonpartisan player profile app for politicians where it breaks down and explains every bill a politician votes for or against into layman's terms so that the average American like, like me can understand politics, be more engaged and be able to register to vote, be able to see news, be able to see articles that's just facts and just not so biased and just because at the end of the day, we all just want facts. So uh, just really just trying to, you know, just bring power back into the people's hands with information and just getting them informed. And I have to say, uh, the person who really just sparked this idea was my best friend and my co-founder, Jackson White. has been my boy since we were 16. So, I mean, we've been through it all with each other, but uh, he loves politics and he's always broken down politics to me in a way that I can understand. So it was uh, just one day, you know, a bill got passed and you know, we were having a discussion about, you know, the bill that got passed and, you know, just talking about how naive we can be as people and misinformed to, you know, the things that's going on. And literally it just, it hit me as clear as day. Like, I'm like, Jay, what if we created an app that broke down politics the way you break it down to me? So we got online, we, you know, started searching for apps that were similar to what I was thinking about and uh, we couldn't find anything. So I told Jay, hold on, bro, I'll be right back. Went to CVS, grabbed some print paper. 20 pages later, shoot, that was Politiscope. AJ, you know, after, um, you know, we brought the prototype to him in March, he loved it. And then he showed, he told us, you know, now you gotta raise money. So I ain't never raised no money in my life. And we had to raise 500K. So I was like, sheesh. So um, AJ just kind of just helped us through that process on how to raise just, you know, you know, uh, pitching to people and just really showing them the product and really showing people what we're trying to do. So. Uh, shoot uh, come june you know three four months later we end up raising 500k and uh that's you know how politico really started going from there coming from you know the midwest you know i, I didn't know nothing about gary v but he was a big thing up on the east coast and uh from what my agents told me you know he was the man so they were stoked about him rocking my jersey and tweeting at me and tweeting them so it was just it was pretty cool so when i like when i first you know started looking into gary v i'm just like man like he a, he a real ass dude, like he, he keep it real and he don't, you know, suit and tie and try to be all proper. He just, you know, speaking how he feels and just, just speaking that real. So, you know, uh, it kind of rolled over into me and just me jumping into that entrepreneur lane because, you know, Gary Vee always talks about, you know, if you got a vision or a dream, just go after it no matter what. And, you know, I had a vision and I was like, hey, nothing's going to stop me from getting this done because it was just so heavy on my heart that I had to go through with it. Or well, I, feel, I felt like I was going to regret it for the rest of my life. So just seeing all those posts and all those uh, tweets, you know, Gary, you know, used to put out, just, it definitely inspired me to just, just go for it just 100%. You were also sharing with me, Walter, mm. that the, uh, the beginnings of Vayner Sports actually mm -hmm. began through the agency that previously represented. Mm -hmm. So it, as Gary, all, Gary loved ta sent, telling a story, but yeah, it, it, it happened because of me. And it's, it's funny because every time I go into VaynerMedia, you know, a few guys be like, I don't got this job. I wouldn't have this job if it wasn't for you. And I'm just like, I mean, this is like Gary says, it's a convoluted reason, but it's still, you know, just having that connection and bringing, you know, something together so great to where we're here now talking about it and really just getting, bringing on the athletes we have now. It's uh, just been a blessing. It's just been, you know, just beautiful to see. Now, Walter, I'm curious to know, as a professional athlete that's now retired, mm -hmm. how important is it to have an agency represent you? It's, I mean, it's super important, but not just no agents, you know, that's going to help you get money before you, you know, while you're training, just, you know, get all these little perks. But agents, uh, agency that actually cares about you after football and actually wants to see you grow as a person, as a man, you know, and really just do stuff outside of football that can help, you know, just create income for you or just help you introduce you or help you, you know, um, just bring forth your passion that you have outside of sports. And what role would you say that they play in your life? I mean, they definitely played a big role in just being a, an advisor in my life, just giving me tips, just in the whole entrepreneur lane and just in the tech startup lane and really just connecting me with people, connect, actually connecting me with our uh, original developers. So it's just uh, having those connections and just helping me put the pieces together as I'm as I continue to grow as, you know, a founder of a, as a tech startup company. From a KPI standpoint, mm -hmm. like, how do you measure the success? In this case, like, yeah. Politiscope, mm -hmm. whether it's Walter or any one of your other clients, like, how do you measure your success? Man, um, 
you know, it's funny, this is definitely gonna come from Gary. Our agency is so long-term game, you know? Like, I'm, we're very lucky because we have the resources to do it, but we focused on building the brand of Vayner Sports, and so doing these little things, like helping a Walter with his company, a, a, a Kyle with the Bird Scooter, a, a, a Rob, those are brand building exercises when that word of mouth gets out there like, man, these guys help you on a core foundational level of personal things. When that word really gets out and people really understand that, that's when it gets really crazy because I know we can deliver on the contract side. I know we can deliver on the marketing, but when we're creating this whole another third level to these guys, you know, we, that's why you hear Gary with so much confidence about how he feels where VaynerSports getting up. I mean, you, you hear him say, he feels like it's a foregone conclusion. That may seem cocky, but when you look at the marketplace and you feel like you have such a good offering, we're super excited about it. I want to touch on something that you just said before, which is get the word out. Yeah. Now, when you say that, are you, yeah. are you suggesting that players that you represent then share with their uh -huh. friends that are also professional athletes? Absolutely. The great work that you do, and you kind of see that if you're, if you're hooking them up with bird scooters in this case, or meet and greets that they're going to tell their friends, and then their friends, also being professional athletes, are going to say, wow, maybe I should leave agencies and go over to Vayner Sports. Uh, athletes, because they're so highly recruited from such a young age, and look, they can make millions of dollars, and a lot of, there's a, there can be a lot of hanger honors in the situation when kids are going through this process of which agency or this and that. So the word of mouth ultimately just is a you know, st stamp of approval or makes them have a comfort level, right? They might really like what you have to bring to the table, they might really like the platform, but knowing that, man, it's not like, it's not, it's, I've been there. I've been there for two years. It's been as good as I thought it would. You, you need that. You have to, it's cosign. You have to have that cosign specifically in sports. You know, when I went through the agency process, I talked to a lot of bigger agencies, a lot of different people, but for me, I felt most comfortable with Vayner and, you know, with what Gary has done, AJ has done, and, and my agent Brian and Brandon Parker and all those guys have just been really, really influential. And for me, it was one of those things where I wanted it genuine. I wanted to know everyone I was working with. I wanted to have a great relationship with everyone that I was working with. So it was a no-brainer for me when I picked those guys. And you can tell that about someone when you meet them. You can tell who's just trying to sell you something and who really cares about you and, and see the future for you. And there's going to be a time and day, you know, when you can't play anymore, when you're 44 years old, you know, like Tom's going to be one day. And, and, you know, you still need those people in your corner to help you. And that's why I signed with Vayner because they are people that do care about me and, you know, want the best for me. Like I said, you want someone that's going to, you know, help you down the road and be there for you. You know, some agencies, when you're done playing football, that might be the last time you talk to your agent or when you sign the dotted line with your agency, that might be the last time you talk to a guy like Gary Vee, you know, the owner of everything. But for Vayner, it's one of those things where they're all in my corner. You know, Gary came down to the senior bowl, like checked in on me. He's always checking in on me, you know? And so it's just one of those things where I just expect and not expect, but it's just one of those things where I've got the impression and the feeling, and I know that they're going to be there throughout the whole entire process. Like you said, while I'm playing and then after. So it's something that, um, you know, I'm very happy about, and I'm, I'm glad I made the right decision, and I came with, came with Vayner Sports. What a company and opportunity that Vayner Sports brought to me is they allowed me to be myself. I don't have to hide anything from them. I could be me. I could go out. I could enjoy myself. I could bring my, my future wife next to me, and they, they appreciate her. They accept her. In situations where as far as the media and the marketing and exposure, how I, how I represent and how I work with Vanish Sports as a business is what's best for me is to have my plan into, intact in hand. Know what I want first and foremost in the top of my head as a, as a young male you know, and as a smart man. You think about it and you say, this is what I want. I want this type of, these type of clothes and these type of shoes. I want this type of deal. I want this type of signing. I feel like I deserve this. How can we go and, and earn it and go grind for it? So when I present different tasks and different opportunities and different margins for us to accomplish and different accolades to go reach. I present in a way of this is what I want, this is what I have, this is the description that I plan out. I need you guys help to help me make it manifest and come to light. Point me in the right direction and get me, please get me in contact with the right people so we all can make this boost and then it's my platform, it's Vander's platform and it's all our ultimate team success. So as long as we're working collectively, we've been doing an awesome job. And since I made that transition and switched agency, I can honestly say like I've been totally happy and appreciative of Vayner. I think these are the type of people that 
me as a person, I will stay in contact with for the rest of my life because they are impacting my life in a crucial time of my life. Like these 20s that I've been blessed with and I'm grinding through, like I'm meeting, meeting some very important people that's shaping my life for the future. And I'm thankful for that because I feel strongly that I'm heading in the right direction in my life. And I think that's, that's what's most appreciative of, of Vayner is that the bonds and the relationships that I build, I don't feel like it's just business. You know, I feel like it's a friendship that is going down the line where I could be 50, retired, gone. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Justin. Hey, AJ. You guys want to get together and go go take a trip, go on a yacht, go do this, go do that. And it's all love. You know, it's not, oh, who is this? When did I represent you? Like, you know, that would never come about because we're so clip tight and such a such a family and we do stuff together. That's why I love. I can honestly say my last agency, I was with them for two years and I could only tell you one person that was in that agency that was playing. And it, we was from the same area of, the, of Tampa. And that's how I knew him. And I only knew my agent and my marketing team and the financial guy. That was it. And if the team was that small, then it, it so be it. But just for me, that was too small for me. I didn't want that for myself. I wanted a bigger platform, and they never really offered that to me, and I'm thankful. You know, and this is this is a sidebar question, but when I think of sports agent, obviously I think of like Jerry Maguire, the movie. Yeah. But in modern times, like uh, Drew Rosenhaus, mm -hmm. someone that mm -hmm. growing up in Miami, yep. you know, I would always see on TV, and he would represent a lot of Hurricanes, and then Lee Steinberg. Like, how does Vayner Sports defer from those agencies? We have five really good NFL agents. We have two guys that were attorneys, right? So there's kind of this myth out there that, you know, as you know, I think it's something like six NFL agents represent like 78% of the NFL. There's some myth that there's some secret sauce that they know that someone else doesn't. By the way, there are a lot of those agents are very good agents. But in a world where all these guys now really care about the opportunities that are afforded them, because a lot of these guys now believe like, Look, my performance on the field, that's, that is something I can control. Like me taking care of my body. And, but what else? If I'm signing with you, what else can you give me? And so that's why we feel like we have a great platform and I'm so excited. And you asked me the question before, why did you roll inclusive into Vayner Sports? The opportunity. People ask me all the time, I'm 35 years old. I'm building an agency with Gary and AJ Vaynerchuk, something they're super passionate about. All my other partners in the company People don't know this, our ethos of this company is to raise the bar and level of service in the entire agency game. It's not just be the best agency, it's put so much pressure on everyone else to raise the standard for these guys that, you know, these guys average life, the career spans 2.3 years. Like, these guys, there's so many horror stories of them not thinking they're gonna be all world, becoming a bust, and then they literally don't lose, know what to do with themselves as an identity. So if us doing better puts more pressure to service the clients better, that's a win. When I think of the competitive advantage that you have, mm -hmm. Banner Sports is under Banner X, mm -hmm. which also has Banner Media. Well, uh, it's actually not under VaynerX. So just so you guys know, it's a separate subsidiary. It's a separate company completely that Gary and AJ, uh, because Stephen Ross owns VaynerX, owner of the Dolphins. So Gary and AJ completely finance Vayner Sports. It's a separate LLC. We're very fortunate. You know, obviously it's a Vayner company. Lots of talent has been shared between lots of, you know, understanding, but it is a separate entity just because in the NFL game, you can't, own any part of a professional team and also represent clients. Now, Justin, I want to switch over to the topic of marketing. You were quoted previously in an article where you stated, we're going to push the envelope on overall brand building. From your standpoint, what makes an athlete marketable? Um, one, wanting to be marketable. Uh, as I kind of went back to, you really need to, it's an investment, in, just like any, right? Everyone now is building their brand and it takes a lot of time and effort. Um, those guys wanting to put in the work to do that, being uh, understanding and willing to know that you're not going to always tell them what they want to hear, right? Their expertise is catching touchdowns, sacking quarterbacks. You know, luckily my expertise is being able to take a guy from A to Z and trying to establish like what that brand wants to be on the field and off the field. So, um, you know, just really being able to help give them the roadmap and say, hey, we've done this before and understanding like what does matter to them. 
there might be some pieces of a brand overall strategy that are not important to them. And it's like, all right, we're going to live with this and this because this goes along with who you are. But knowing them as people really is that core. Do you find though that your clients instinctively know how to market themselves? I think it's funny because I think most athletes think that people and brands want the cookie cutter, hey, he shows up, he says the right things. The funny thing is brands these days, they want it to be organic and they, and they want, consumers want to know like, if, I'm, if, I, if this person is a spokesperson, is this relevant or does this make sense? So my biggest task is getting my guys to own, own their quirks and differentiators and bring those to the table and feel comfortable with that because that ultimately I think is what is their biggest selling point. On the Banner Sports client roster, mm -hmm. who would you say kind of sets the bar? So give us an example of maybe one or two clients that, that they're using social media on their own. They, they get it. They're marketing themselves for Yeah. Um, Keith Smith, one of our clients, goes by Beef31 on Instagram. He's, um, he's naturally good at it. You know, he's engaged. He, you know, before he even joined Vayner, he was, he was pretty good. We've given him some tools, but he's naturally that way um, on social media. Uh, I think as just, you know, who raises the bar on different things. We talked about it, Rob Candici's personality. He's just super, super charismatic as a person and, uh, and being comfortable with himself off the field as well. Now, Justin, we spoke about Walter Powell before. The reality is that for every athlete, their playing career has a shelf life. Yep. So how does a player remain marketable once that playing career is over? That's, well, it's great. That's literally one of, our sell, one of our selling points from day one is a lot of these guys previously said, you know, when I retire, I'll start building my brand. No, no, no. We need to start literally, the, you're never going to have more attention than when you're in the league. If you think you're going to all of a sudden retire and you're going to become, people are going to care more about you, that's not going to happen. So for us, I think again, it goes back to us being the authority, right? Like other sports agencies can't say that they rep, you know, Anheuser-Busch and Diageo and you give them best practices for social media. When you're like, hey, Hey, athlete A, this is the game plan that this brand works for. It definitely is good enough for you. They listen and they employ it themselves. Switching from marketing over to new client acquisition. Yeah. I read that last year LeBron James made over $52 million in endorsements. His salary was $33 million. Yeah. So there's a big difference yep. there. How do you go out and find a unicorn client? How do you go out and find the next LeBron? Man, uh, recruiting is a really interesting thing. You know, people, I feel very, I think we, you know, traditionally it's all about relationships and finding people that know the right people and, and having them put, set you up with opportunities. I'll tell you this transparently though, you know, in the world of social media where everyone now has access to each other, right? Agents have access to players in their DM and that's a legal way to recruit. We feel like we're very lucky where we have a lot of exposure and the brand building we see with Vayner Sports where you know, transparently, before I joined Vaynersports, I definitely think like if out of 30 first round picks, if I was trying to sign them on the marketing endorsement side, I may only meet five to 10 because that amount of networking to get there. In a world where now social media has made very, almost everyone uh, accessible, you know, I'd be remiss to say if I didn't think Gary being a lightning bolt he is and putting this content out there, these guys are seeing that on a regular basis. You know, we're getting, I'd say, at a, you know, we, we're getting a lot of at bats that I think we wouldn't be getting in another way. Now walk me through, Justin, when you're working with a brand sure. on behalf of the client, take me through the process of working that brand deal out. Yeah. Um, you know, let me go back. Traditionally, five years ago, I, I would literally take my roster and I'd approach Brand X and say, hey, which one of these guys would you be interested in doing a, okay, would you like to put them on a billboard? Would you like to put them on a TV show? With the advent of social media and digital, that's completely different now. And we're lucky that, again, because Vayner has such an understanding of creating compelling content. So when I approach a new brand, okay, uh, I'm going to give you a great example. There's a product called Hilux. Uh, probably is a competitor to Gatorade, right? Up and coming uh, brand. Uh, I pitch them. It's not only, hey, use work these athletes and let them be brand ambassadors, but Vayner will also be the ones that help you create that content and will be the one that will also help you run the paid media. If you're a brand and you're like, all right, this is so much bigger than just even doing an endorsement deal, this is literally part of my entire marketing budget on a yearly basis. Like, Brands are getting in with us at a lower price point than they ever would on the Vayner Media side and getting some of those best practices. Earlier on, you mentioned Diageo and Anheuser Busch as some of the brands yep. that Vayner Media represents yep. and how you uh, integrate your Vayner Sports clients yep. into working with those clients. Now, it's no secret, Gary Vaynerchuk has a large social media presence, massive following. Yep. 
how much of that following becomes a competitive advantage when you're approaching new clients? Um, huge. I mean, you know, you, one of the other sponsors that you didn't see that, that you know we, we didn't talk about is On It, company out of Austin, Texas, uh, nutritional company, growing rapidly. Uh, they're big fans. They had been very big fans of the content that Gary had created and who Gary was as a person. We recently, uh, you know, we recently just did a year-long partnership with them, and absolutely, there's definitely some piece of Gary V being involved with the players that made that deal happen. So, I can absolutely say right here sitting here that our clients are getting paid because Gary's involved in things that he wouldn't normally be. Hello.